I'm Monica Mangan, and I believe that updating your home doesn't have to take a ton of time or money. I show people how to get Pinterest-worthy spaces that are just right for them. Oh my god! This is okay. unbelievable! Give me one weekend, I'll give you five projects, and you'll have a completely transformed space by Monday. This weekend, I am in New Orleans, Louisiana. Or is it Narlands? Or wait, New Orleans. However the heck you say it. I am here. But this week, I'm not working inside of a home, I'm working outside of it. This weekender, it's all about the curb appeal. Hi, I'm Tiffany. I'm a Las Vegas transplant living in New Orleans, Louisiana. I recently bought a house here. When I bought the house, I wasn't thinking about curb appeal. I was very concerned with the inside of the house. But as I started bringing furniture in, I noticed that my house looks really shabby on the outside. And I just, I really want my house to shine. I want it to match where I'm from, yet where I'm at, but still look different from every other house on the block. Front yard is really important to me. Yeah, and it should be. I mean, curb appeal is a big thing. It's the first impression that people are gonna get of your home. So, you've been here about a year? Yeah. I love the house, it was completely renovated, so it was a great fit. Okay, a lot of times when a realtor's selling a new property, they drop in a couple plants just so it looks good. It's basically called real estate staging, and then everything dies. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. That is a door now. <laughs> okay, so now this is a little interesting though. We're in New Orleans, and there's a very set style to New Orleans homes. They have certain colors, they have certain styles, certain looks. You don't want that. No, I'm from Las Vegas, and I kind of miss home a little bit, so I would love to have a little bit of Vegas and a little bit of New Orleans. Describe to me a little bit about what you mean by a Vegas exterior. So Vegas has very much a desert landscape. Mm -hmm. So cactuses, wax plants, rocks, gravel, sand. Okay, so you're okay that your house is gonna stand out in the neighborhood. That's let what you're looking for? Let it shine. <laughs> That's what you want. Yeah, huh? <laughs> absolutely. All right, so we are gonna do a couple things here. We are going to paint your house, your entire house. Oh, wow. <laughs> How do you feel about that? <laughs> I was not expecting that, sorry. <laughs> I really wanna think through every area of this front yard that will impact the curb appeal. So hopefully these five projects will have really big impact and change this entire yard this weekend. First thing we're gonna do is prep this house for some paint. Okay. Ready to do it? I'm ready. Let's do it. Before we can paint this house, we need to get all these dead bushes and plants out of the way. So curb appeal is critical. It makes the first impression of your home. And you can decide what you want it to say. This homeowner wants it to say Vegas, baby. By the end of this weekend, Vegas is coming to New Orleans. All right, we got the hard work done. Now we can paint. We're going for different, right? Absolutely. You ready to see it? White. White, like bright white. So it's crisp, clean, bright white that you'd see in Vegas. In Vegas, okay? The one thing to note here is that when you're painting your house white, you have to use a really good paint because you don't want it to look gray. We don't want it to hold dirt. We want it to always look crisp, clean white. So we're using this paint, it's called Weather Shield. It's from HGTV Home by Sharon Williams. This will fight stains. Feeling good about this? I'm feeling confident about it. You seem like a pretty competitive kind of lady, so I was thinking we have a little competition with our house painting. Okay. I'll take the side. You pick the side with the huge window. <laughs> I get a 10 second advantage. Absolutely not. If you know me, you may know that I'm a tiny bit competitive. There you go. Really? Have fun. And by tiny bit, I mean really, really competitive. Can you paint a house in a weekend? This house you can. Luckily, there's a small amount of surface area that we need to paint, so that's why it was doable. Finish. No. <laughs> okay, okay. I concede, you did a pretty good job. I had twice as much to do. You picked the side. You picked the side! <laughs> strategy. Speaking of strategy, I've got a great one to create a unique focal point front and center in Tiffany's yard. 
So what we're doing is building you a new mailbox stand. Right. Fancy, fancy. Fancy, right? So when we're thinking about curb appeal, sometimes people neglect their mailbox. All right, it is something people notice. This is not just a nice fancy gift for your mailman, okay? <laughs> this actually does play a role in curb appeal. So we have a whole bunch of wood slats at two different sizes, a long side and then shorter for the front. Basically, we're gonna case out the mailbox, okay? Now, what we have here, I ripped down these pieces. This will serve as kind of the corner supports and little tip, we cut the bottom at an angle so it'll be easier to get into the ground. Exactly the same. So we are just gonna finish this entire piece here and then actually do it three more times. This ain't gonna be your typical mailbox, more like a piece of art. We're basically creating a large rectangular base for the mailbox by attaching our cross slats to vertical supports, then attaching each section to make the rectangle. Okay, wait. Oh! like a glove. <laughs> we'll trim down the existing post and use it to secure the mailbox in addition to burying the feet six inches into the ground. Voila! Bet you've never seen a mailbox like that, have ya? I've got one last little thing I want to get done today, and it's a surprise for Tiffany. I'm painting her front door to add a pop of color and create a focal point for the house. I hope she likes it. Okay, Sunday morning means we're halfway there. Lots to do today, but first, Tiffany has got to see her front door. I'm excited for you to see. Okay. Check it out. Wow, fuchsia, I love it. You do? Yes, this is great. I was looking at your Pinterest boards and they're desert, but they really lean towards almost Palm Springs style. Yeah, this is amazing. So the plan for today, um, you can tell Matt's already been working to start setting up our flower beds. He's leveled them and got everything set and the three of us are gonna work together and give you some flower beds that are a little more than the realtor gave you. <laughs> yes, and hopefully we'll live longer. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'm trying to mimic the stacked wood look of the mailbox with these new planters. It's a very easy build. Matt leveled our ground boards and now we'll just be building on top of them log cabin style in rectangular multi-levels by measuring and cutting our two by fours to size, then attaching them using screws. So this is the first tier so far. What do you think? I think it looks great, actually. I think when you're working on curb appeal, you need to think of color, you need to think of texture. You also need to think of depth. You don't want everything flat against your house. For our plants, we're adding a soil barrier on the bottom and sides of our planters, filling the topsoil and planting a variety of different styles of plants. Be sure you know how much sun your planters will get and choose plants that will thrive in your temperature zone. After adding some white rocks on top of the soil for a clean, crisp Vegas look, we're going to paint all the wood domino black, including the mailbox, so everything ties together and pops against the crisp white backdrop of the house. The exterior paint will also seal the wood to prevent any rotting. Just look how we made a handful of wood look. Love it. All right, so we've built some big planters. I'm gonna scale things down a little bit for us, okay? Even when you're thinking about curb appeal, you need to think about the little details as well. The little details will still go a long way. So I thought it would be fun to build a little baby mini planter box that also holds your house numbers. Oh, cool. So I have some wood for us. This is plywood, okay? It's good for exterior, and we're gonna make a tiny little planter box, and it's gonna be super, super easy. Okay, so we're gonna use our nail gun and attach this back guy in. I'm gonna go with these sides, and for these ones, I'm going to put them in at a bit of an angle. Just like that, we got ourselves a little box. All right, so pretty much now, we're gonna paint it, plant it, and pop some house numbers on it. This might take a little muscle getting uh, the blocks over here. This is about the easiest patio project you'll ever see. A few pavers directly on the grass are the perfect way to create a little sitting area. Now what I'm doing here is just creating a simple grid. Three in the front, three in the back. I wanna make sure that they're all lined up nicely. 
We really lucked out here with Tiffany's yard because it's completely level. If your yard isn't level, what you'd want to do is dig out a little bit and tamp down. Seriously, how can we have Vegas without some flamingos? <laughs> So how's that for a 20 minute patio makeover? If you have a flat yard, take advantage of it. Sometimes you don't have to make things more complicated than they are. Six paver stones, two fabulous chairs, a little plant, Tiffany is gonna love this. And don't forget the flamingos. Okay, it's an all out rush to finish this project tonight. I'm adding a little drama to the house with these planter shutters that will bring even more life and modern style. And we're out of light. But we got it done, and it looks amazing. I mean, I think it looks amazing. Can't really see it right now. <laughs> this is so freaking awesome. This is gorgeous. And really different, right? It's really different, but it's like different in the like, I feel like someone just took a house from the West Coast and just dropped it in the middle of New Orleans. Aw, oh, that, that is awesome to hear. That is what we were trying to do. I really like the contrast between the black planters, the white rock, and then this seriously bold door. The door is awesome. It matches the plants, pop of color. I love it. And then how cute did the number box turn out? The planner box came out really great. Do you see how now like those small little details, they, they really make sense. Painting the door, adding the boxes, adding that. It's not a whole bunch and it made my house look completely different. So overall, do you feel like it's giving you a little taste of home? It's giving me better than a taste of home because this looks better than anything in Vegas too, so. <laughs> This weekend I'm in New Orleans, Louisiana, helping out a brand new homeowner with a kitchen renovation. This kitchen has a lot going on for it. Did I mention a fireplace? Why don't you look at your new kitchen? <laughs> Are you loving the weekender? If so, click like and subscribe to the Lowe's YouTube channel. That way you'll be notified when the next episode drops. And then I challenge you to become a weekender. You can get started on our hub at Lowe's.com. We have how-to videos, step-by-step -step guides, and project lists for every episode. If you need a little more inspiration, check out my boards on Lowe's Pinterest page. We have mood boards, alternate styles, and you can pin your favorite projects. Thanks, guys.